What's up friends, today we are back with the Maker X DV6. Does it perform as expected? Is it worth the price and should you upgrade? We're going to answer all of those questions in this video, so stay until the very end to find out. Alright, we're out here testing the Maker X DV6 today, and it is 2021. After a crazy year last year and all of the new contenders to the ESC game, it's becoming increasingly harder to pick which ESC you should use in your board. And with the material shortages and chip shortages just absolutely blowing the price of ESCs out of the water, every dollar becomes even more important. So, is the Maker X the right ESC for your build? Well, part of the goal for today is to answer that question. Now, the question of is the ESC right for your board is kind of complex and there's a lot of things that go into it. I think the two top things for me are reliability and price. But one of the most important things that I've found recently is how it performs under extreme loads like hills and sustained high speeds. If you watched my Maker X DV6 installation video, you would know that I had a lot of trouble with the last Maker X ESC because it was constantly overheating. Now, that's obviously a terrible situation because it means you're just gonna lose power on hills and when you're at top speed, you're gonna start thermal throttling and it's just a bad time overall. So, with this ESC, fortunately, I'll give you a little teaser, I've not had any of those issues. And today we're going to be challenging it to a pretty large hill and we're gonna do quite a few hill runs and see how long it takes for it to overheat. My guess is that it'll probably take uh, four to five hill runs before it overheats. And this is a pretty serious hill. We're talking like 25 to 30% grade and it's about a quarter to half a mile long. So we're headed there right now, but let me give you a little bit of a breakdown on this board that I'm riding. So. In this board, we've got two Flip Sky 6374 Battle Hardened sealed motors. And these are those are pretty serious motors. They are able to take up to 80 amps of battery current easily. And you can even push them over 100 if you want. But I've got them set at 77 right now uh, because that's what I had them set to on my last ESC. And I want to make sure that I do a fair comparison. So Along with that, we've got a 12S7P of Samsung 30Q cells, and uh, it's getting a bit tired, but um, still works well. Still get about 16 miles out of it. And the main reason I get 16 miles is because of my riding style. Uh, it's very aggressive, and also because of the wheels slash tires that I have on here. So on here, I've got Bergmeister hubs, which are six inch aluminum hubs. And on those, I have two Bergmeister tires, which are on the front wheels. And then on the back wheels, I've got two clever six inch tires. And these are popular tires to use for e-skate because they're pretty cheap. They last a good long time and they're not very hard to get a hold of. Bergmeisters, on the other hand, they're nice and soft, but it's kind of hard to get a hold of them nowadays. And some people report having issues with uh, them getting holes in them easily. Fortunately, I've not had that experience, but they're still on my board to this day. As we make our way over to the hill test, it's important to remember that rider weight makes a huge difference on the thermal performance of an ESC. So, in both this test and when I was riding the GoFock Retro, I weigh about 150 pounds and I'm wearing about 5 pounds of gear. So we'll say that the rider weight comes out to about 155 pounds which is probably on the lower side of average rider weight. So just keep that in mind as you look at some of the numbers. I'll catch up with you guys when I get over to the hill and we'll get right into this test. As you may have noticed, we've been riding for quite a while so far and the ESC has gotten a little bit of time to warm up. But one of the things that I mentioned in the video where I was talking about the GoFock Retro is that I would start to get ESC overheating even in riding at high speed. So the rest of the way there, I'm just going to book it, go at least 24 to 25 miles an hour 
and uh, we'll see what the ESC temperature is doing when we get there. It's about 53.6 degrees on the ESC right now, and it's pretty average day out. I would say it's probably around 70 to 72 degrees. So uh, yeah, I'll just throw in some footage here and I'll catch up with you in a minute. All right, so we're at the base of the hill that we're gonna be testing on right now. And fortunately, the ESC only climbed a few points of a degree. So it ended up at 53.8 degrees, which is perfectly acceptable. Um, if you don't know, the standard cutoff for a VESC is 75 degrees and final cutoff at 100. Sometimes it varies a little bit depending on which firmware you're running, but I personally have mine set to 80 degrees cutoff start um, just because I wanted a little bit more headroom. So 53 is far away from that. Anyways, you probably can't tell from this camera, um, but this hill is very long. It goes up the street, around the corner, and up again. So I'm gonna go right up with my phone and take a few short videos of some of the different slopes, and I'll give you guys a look at what the grade is in different parts of the hill. After that, we'll get started on the hill testing, and uh, I'll take you guys with me. All right, now that you guys have seen a little bit of the hill, it's time to get into the very first hill test. And I'm just gonna do these in succession and do it until the ESC decides to hit probably 80 degrees um, or until it starts slowing down a ton. And I'm just gonna do them back to back and we'll see how it goes. I'm looking at performance so far, I'm thinking it might actually take two to three times, but we'll see. The ESC is at 56.6 degrees right now and Let's just get started. I'm going to aim for maybe 15 to 20 miles an hour up these hills. Um, it really does stress it out a lot when you go fast, so we'll try and go about a realistic speed. And another thing to remember is that this is not the steepest hill in the world or anything like that. So I actually ended up losing the audio for my portable recorder here, so the only audio I've got for this is the GoPro audio. But basically what I'm saying here is that this isn't the steepest hill in the world, but my idea was to find something realistic that I could test all of the different boards I have on, and this is the one I picked. So you see a grade gauge on this overlay, but that's not entirely accurate. That's a relative grade compared to where the meter originally started. I actually went to different parts on this hill and the beginning of the hill starts at 7%. It increases to about 12 and then this part is all between 18 and 20-ish. You might see the temperature gauge on the left side of the screen there. That is the accurate temperature of the ESC. When I call out the temperatures in this video, I am talking in degrees Celsius, but unfortunately I wasn't able to find a way to display both Imperial and Metric in the overlay. Pretty decent performance. It's surprisingly difficult to keep your speed that high on that hill. It's a little bit bumpy. Anyways, um, I'm just gonna head down again and see if we can crank out another high speed hill. And the thing is, something I noticed about this ESC is that uh, with the heat sink design it has, even though it's completely enclosed, it actually is able to reject heat pretty quickly. And that is a huge bonus when you're riding for extended periods of time. So we're down at the bottom again for test number two 
and we're down to 65, 64 degrees. Um, it did heat up a little bit more when we were coming down. I put some throttle on because of the, the pneumatic wheel. So let's hit it for round two. I'm not super hopeful on this performance, but we shall see. I would bet that most other ESCs like the Stormcore or the Unity would probably overheat now too. So let's see how it goes. Official starting temperature is 63.8 degrees. again where I mean it gets rid of heat quickly because it's already down to 73 degrees again so I think one more time we'll probably smack it up to 80 degrees and uh, I think we'll call it that for now I'm pretty happy with this performance it's really impressive especially compared to what I was working with before all right back down at the bottom again and let's get this one final hill test in I'm pretty certain that we're probably gonna overheated on this one uh, we're still at 70 degrees right now so I'm expecting probably part way through the steep part of the hill we'll probably hit 80 um, I'm not 100% sure if I set my cutoff to 80 or 85 I guess we'll see it's very obvious when you hit a thermal cutoff all right official starting temperature is 69.8 degrees on both sides Surprisingly, the motors have stayed cool for all this. They're only 67 degrees, but it's pretty nice out. So. Right around this point is when I start to hit a bit of thermal throttling. You kind of start to feel it a little bit before the soft cutoff, and then you really start to feel it once the cutoff hits. So I'm at a, just over 80 degrees here. Once I round the turn, I end up going almost all the way to full throttle, which I almost never do on this board. I'm full throttle here, and I pretty much make it all the way up to 83 and a half degrees Celsius. Well, that ends the actual hill test part of this ride for now. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing that footage. Uh, next time I do a hill test, I'll probably change it up a little bit, but I think I'll probably come back to the same hill. So uh, let's get into the rest of the video. So we're back at the workbench and I hope you guys really enjoyed watching my hill test. It was fun to record and I'm looking forward to doing more of them in the future. Now that we've got all this data, what exactly does it tell us? It tells us that this ESC is great at heat performance. And while I'm not a super heavy rider and the hill wasn't the steepest hill in the world, it has proved that it is way better than what I had before and that was mostly what I was looking for. But if I had to give it a personal rating, I would say that this ESC is good for about 80 motor amps per side for, I don't know, a good long while, probably 20 minutes of doing straight hills. and. Right now we're gonna go back and compare it just a little bit to my old ESC. I have a meter log where I know it overheated. Um, and unfortunately I lost a bunch of my meter data from my previous phone when I transferred over. So I've just got this one to show you, but I think it'll be really eye-opening to see how quickly the old one overheated with an even less strenuous setup. All right, so I've got the old meter data up on my phone here and I'm screen recording so you guys can see what I'm looking at. So this 
ride is pretty cool. It was actually a range test of my uh, board with the pneumatic tires on it, but it's a pretty long ride. Um, but we'll see here in a second how quickly this ESC overheated. If you look at the elevation at the bottom of the screen there, you can tell the difference in elevation from where the meter started. And we're gonna go to a point over here where it's the same exact hill that we actually tested on just the other day and at the beginning of this video. You can see the elevation start to go up here and the temperature started around 63 degrees. And I got up to the first turn on the hill and we got all the way up to 78 degrees Celsius. And at that point you can start to feel the ESC overheating and the temperature that it reports the meter isn't necessarily the exact temperature that it's gonna be on the FETs in the actual ESC itself. And it overheated, so I stopped at that curve and I waited for it to cool down again because I knew that the next part of the hill was the steepest. So I continued up there, you can see the speed increase. And I made it most of the way up that hill and we maxed out at 80 degrees Celsius and I had to wait again on the hill for the ESC to cool down again. And it cooled down to 63 while I was waiting and then I continued on along with my ride. But you can see that this is one single run starting at about the same temperature, so about 63 degrees like it was uh, for this hill test on the DV6. And we smacked it all the way up to overheating on the first part of the slope. So. If that's not proof enough that this ESC is much better than the GoFock Retro, then I don't know what else is. But the main point is that this ESC is great at, at heat performance and it's way better than what I had before. So I am happy. All right, I don't wanna take up too much of your time with kind of boring data, but I'm gonna show you one more meter log. And this is the log that I showed you in the actual hill test, which produced the data that was on the screen. So in comparison, and for some reason it didn't record any of the map data. I don't know what happened. It does that sometimes. So starting at the very beginning of this log, we are sitting at the bottom of the hill and this is, I started it right before I started riding. So you can see here, the temperature starts to rise and this is the first run and we only get up to about 75 degrees Celsius. And this is with going all the way up to 50 kilometers an hour, which is pretty fast. It's almost 30 miles an hour, or it is 30 miles an hour or so. And then you can see the dip here is when I'm riding back down the hill. Obviously that's less strenuous. And I get to the bottom of the hill about here. And then I start going up again. We hit some higher speeds. I had to slow down for the turn. And then we go all the way up the hill and it looks like I maxed out at about 82 degrees on the second run. But that's okay because on our way down, we cooled back down. And at the bottom of the hill, I got down to, it looks like about 73, 72, 71 degrees. And now the final run, I go up the hill again. And this is where I started to feel a tiny bit of thermal throttling, which is still not bad and I got all the way up to 84 degrees Celsius. So if you compare this log to the last one, you can see the drastic difference. And I think it's time to move on to the next category of this review. Let's take a moment to talk about the price of this ESC as that was my second point at the beginning of the video. Is it worth the price? Absolutely. If you have done any ESC shopping recently, you will notice that this comes in at the low end of the cost spectrum. And the only thing that I could find at the moment that's comparable is the Zenith ESC and it's out of stock, so you can't even get that. So what does it come out at? $272.70 with shipping to San Diego. And it's very expensive compared to what ESCs used to be, but compared to all the other options from the Fogwax Unity Plus to the Storm Core to the Spin 10 ESC, and heck, even Flip Sky is more expensive. And of course, Trampa uh, is always more expensive, but those are rock solid ESCs. So is it worth the price? I think so. Obviously this is all moot point if it fails tomorrow, but I don't think it will. 
100 miles might seem like almost nothing to seasoned e-skate riders, but I think it's enough for proof of concept and I'm going to keep riding this thing until it dies, hopefully years in the future. One final point about Maker X before we move on to the should you upgrade question. It is important to remember that Maker X has had some ups and downs with their customer service response. And I've heard that people have had excellent experiences like myself and others that have waited two weeks for a response. So when you buy something in this price range, something has to take a hit. And unfortunately, customer service for now has taken a hit. I'm not sure if it will improve in the future, but all we can do is hope for that. Obviously, we all know the best customer service is Trampa. They replace things quickly. They ship extremely fast. They somehow ship from the UK or wherever they're located to the US in like three days, which is just crazy. You're probably gonna wait a little while for your Maker X, but to me, I think the price savings is worth it. It's time to answer the final question that I presented in this review. Should you upgrade to the Maker X DV6? I think so, but only if you need to. There's a couple reasons why you might want to upgrade your ESC, but I think the main one is that people need a new ESC when their old one dies. So if you need a new ESC, I think this is an excellent choice, no matter what you're coming from, if your old one is dead. However, it is a little bit large, so it might not work with all setups. I'll talk about the actual size of it when I get onto my rating system at the very end of this video. If you have a 4.12 ESC and you're looking to upgrade to a, a V6 ESC and you're hoping it'll be different, I think you might be a little bit disappointed because to me, I felt absolutely no difference in performance between a V4 and a V6 ESC. And I'm talking about the hardware version. So if you're looking to upgrade because of that, I would probably recommend against upgrading. The final reason is because of heat. And I think that is an excellent reason to upgrade and it's exactly why I upgraded. So if you have problems with overheating, especially if you're planning on exposing the heat sink to air, definitely consider upgrading to this ESC. All right, I'm very excited for this part of the review as it lays the foundation for all of my future reviews. In this video, we're going to be introducing a brand new rating system called the RBEM score. <laughs> Now, you might be familiar with someone named Doug DeMuro on YouTube, and my system is heavily inspired from that, so thank you, Doug, for coming up with a great system to rate products. For ESCs, we're going to be working with a 50-point system with five categories. Each category will rate out of 10 points, and the higher score you receive, the better. The first category is size. This ESC is a mid-size, not nearly as small as the Trampa HD series, but not quite as large as the Spin 10 ESC. The wire placement is good, but it is quite thick, and this can be quite problematic for thinner enclosures. It gets a 7 out of 10. The next category is heat performance. I was quite impressed by this ESC when it comes to its heat performance. Directly comparing it to its little brother, it rises high above. While these ratings are not comparative to other products, I was fully satisfied with the heat performance of this ESC and it deserves a nine out of 10, only losing a point because it is a bit wonky to mount the ESC to face air. The next category is IO, that is what connectors ship with it, how many ports it has and the quality of those ports. This ESC ships with every cable and connector you need to get going. You can rest easy knowing that you won't have to look for any odd connectors. Along with that, it has almost all of the I.O. you'd expect to find on a dual ESC, including two UART ports. For the great choice of XT90 and 5.5mm bullets, as well as providing all of the connectors to interface with it, this ESC receives a 9 out of 10, only losing a point for being behind the standard and still using micro USB. The next category is build quality, and the build quality for this ESC was excellent. All ports were soldered solidly and both USB ports held firmly in place. The machining on the heatsink, quality of anodization, and the threads for mounting are all high quality. The soldering on the XT90 and bolt connectors was excellent with no cracking or signs of weak joints. 
For the excellent build quality overall, this ESC gets a 10 out of 10. The final category is accessories and support. Accessories that are provided with this ESC are excellent. Most ESC manufacturers do not provide any connectors at all, let alone everything you need to get it running. Props Maker X for even including a USB cable. Support is unfortunately where Maker X falls a little bit short. In my experience, it's been good, but I've heard many complain about slow response and difficulty returning products. I believe that this category deserves a seven out of 10. Bringing together all of the ratings, we come out with a combined score of 42 out of 50. Like every ESC manufacturer, Maker X has some room to grow, but I think they did an excellent job with this ESC and I would be happy for you guys to support them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video review. It took a long time to film, but I enjoyed putting all the effort into it. As always, feel free to leave comments and suggestions down below. And while you're here, why not check out another video and subscribe? Stay tuned for more product reviews and ratings in the future. For now, keep riding and peace out.